as factions dissolve and form. And lust for power enslaves all. Such folly and futility in the grand design. Curious how lines once clearly defined become blurred. Hmm. Perhaps it is time for them to be redrawn. What is Injustice 2? Injustice 2 is the sequel to the first Injustice game that we released four years ago now. And it was a really nice success for us. So obviously, you know, the, the next thing was to, how can we top it? What can we do bigger and better for it? And, you know, I think we've done everything to be for people to expect to do, and then, but we've also taken some bigger leaps as far as unexpected uh, things with gameplay. There's the gear system, which is very new for fighting games. Like it reminds me of, um, like the, the gear, the loot drops from Destiny or exactly. Diablo. So, like, what was the idea behind that? Because that seemed kind of radical. Yeah, it was. It was. We really wanted to add something that people did not see coming as far as a fighting game, and this this gear system is exactly that. So it's you know, costume pieces that players can get you know drops of after fights that will upgrade their character, not only the visually, but also um, gameplay wise. And so there's a lot of personalization, customization, and you're really kind of crafting your version of Superman, of Batman, Flash, all of the iconic DC characters. You're the creative director of this game. What does, what does that mean? What does your role entail for this game then? Well, you know, these games are a massive undertaking now. You know, there's, there's hundreds of people literally working on it. And at the end of the day, somebody needs to be kind of making the calls on things as far as, you know, decisions, which direction we're going to go. So I think of myself as kind of like, you know, steering the Titanic. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of people working on the game. Is this. that the right analogy? Let's hope. <laughs> or hope oh, not. not the Titanic. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, no, it's probably like steering a gigantic steamship. And the, um, the, it's exciting, but it's also very daunting because there's, you know, there's a thousand decisions to make, you know, every week, and it's just a, uh, it's a big endeavor. How, like, how much of a change is that process now compared to, like, 1991, 92, when you were making the first Mortal Kombat game? Like, what yeah. are those even comparable? Well, just in terms of numbers, um, Mortal Kombat had four people uh, working on it: a sound guy, two artists, and myself. And I was the only programmer. And the um, the last Mortal Kombat and Injustice were probably 180, 200 people um, core, from the core group, and then another couple of hundred um, outside in other studios and contractors. It's a big, much bigger project. Back in the day, in the first Mortal Kombat, I was the voice of a lot of the characters. You know, yeah, I yeah. was the, the the announcer. I was Scorpion yelling, "Get over here!" Now we have professional actors. We actually have people who know what they're doing as far as their voice is concerned. Um, you know, reading scripts and uh, you know doing a lot of uh, you know what they do in the real movies. What, what was what was your impulse on making storylines and storytelling important to a, a genre that typically doesn't really focus on that. Yeah. Ironically, fighting games have been known to be very light on story. You know, the first Mortal Kombat was kind of the first fighting game that had, you know, wrote a backstory on characters and let you, and that really kind of inspired a lot of things like the uh, movie and the TV shows that kind of spawned from it. But we never told a really elaborate story ourselves as far as because just the medium was not, you know, really uh, easy to tell a story. So. You know, we decided to do something where we wanted to have an interactive movie, you know, that plays out and then there's these conflicts and that's where the player jumps in and actually when it's time to fight, the player jumps in. So we came up with a method of, you know, transitioning in and out of the fights really smoothly and players really embraced it and we've been doing that format of storytelling since. Uh, how, how do you figure out, uh, like, or make decisions about uh, what kind of influences from other uh, versions of DC or, or DC and other medium? How, uh, how does that influence, like, your your design process, your character process? Because, like, as we mentioned before, like, the game has a lot of the voice actors from the cartoons, but, like, say, for example, like, Aquaman looks like comic book Aquaman. He doesn't right. look like Jason Momoa in the upcoming right. film. Like, right. how do you figure that out? Are there any discussions, like, as far as, like, how we want to branch that out or, or bridge those, which different medium? You know, we don't have any kind of set rules, like, let's try to make it look like this. We really try to make our characters look like POW, you know, a Netherrealm version of these characters. And um, 
I think we do draw some inspiration, though, I mean, in some of our, our, our super moves or something that we've seen, something that's very iconic for the character that we've, people are expecting it to do. Um, we've drawn from those and you know, created you know, moves in the game or super moves like that, but there's no really set rule that we say, let's try to be more like the movie or try to be more like the TV show. Yeah, I, th I think actually we want to keep you know a little separate from the from the movies because they're like I said it's it's um, there are so many representations of these characters you know I I, d I don't think we want to have any like confusion of people like is that the one that was in Suicide Squad or is that a different one there? Yeah. So. But certainly you're gonna, you might have some people who are getting into this or their interest is drawn here because they saw Suicide Squad. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, and Deadshot as well, right? So yeah, yeah. I think those are the same people who would like you know read the comic book and. You know, because they saw Suicide Squad, all of a sudden they're, let's read a Harley yeah. Quinn comic book. Over the last few years, Injustice and Mortal Kombat, they've kind of been embraced by the esports crowd and the competitive crowd. I know that they announced a, in, an Injustice 2 championship for um, yeah. both pro players and maybe aspiring or amateur players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, I remember in the 90s, Mortal Kombat wasn't necessarily like your top competitive game, uh, tournament fighter. It was more of a kind of a fun thing for, yeah, a, casual you know, thing, for yeah. a casual thing. Like, you know, for some, that's a bad word. I don't think it is for us. No, not at all. Um, um, like, how has that embraced by like the competitive, like professional side of uh, video games um, affected maybe your approach on how to design or create these games? Well, we've always wanted our games. We've always wanted to cast the widest net as far as you know having the game be able to be approachable from the guy who doesn't study fighting games for two hours every night and stream and, and do all that stuff. At the same time, we also wanted to add layers. You know that those you know, more hardcore players, the, the evangelists of the game in a lot of ways are going to be able to kind of dissect and, you know, count frames and all that stuff like that. So at the highest level, we really want anybody to be able to do a super move or an x-ray move. You know, you just pull both triggers yeah. and boom, there it is, you know. And, but at the same time, we, we do features in the game that the casual person might not even ever you know, encounter or experience or realizes in the game. And it's kind of like that balance of the two that we're, that's really where we, the sweet spot that we're yeah, shooting I mean, how for. do you, uh, yeah, how do you figure out that balance? Because like, what if you're, you know, w if one is making like fairly complex uh, character tutorials, someone's gonna go like, how many people actually know what this is, this is saying? Like, oh, maybe 5% yeah. of the player plus, like why are you making this for 5% of the player That's base? the conversation that we have in our office every week. You know, it's, it's um, the, the, the process that we do of these games is a completely collaborative, team effort and that involves debates and yeah. disagreements and you know um, somebody needs to eventually make the right call this is where we're going and where we're gonna go. Um, I was looking into like oh, what uh, Canadian characters are there on the DC uh, universe and like there aren't many um, but a few years ago uh, Jeff Lemire introduced Equinox so she's like a Cree superhero um, like actually I have a photo of her I'm, I, I couldn't help but wonder um, if you were to make or introduce Equinox or Equinox into into an Injustice game. Um, so she's like... Oh, wow. So, That's yeah, a cool, so she, uh, cool looking character. Yeah, so she's yeah. a Cree character. Her powers generally uh, are drawn from nature okay. and they change with the seasons. Sure. So I'm wondering, like, w like, with that info, like, how would you maybe, like, work, uh, workshop that character in, in a fighting game. How would that work, perhaps? Well, you know, with Injustice, we always have this one button that's called, like, the power button. Yeah, and that's yeah. kind of like an exclusive, you know, only, um, only that character uses, uh, uses it in that way. And, you know, off the top of my head, I would have, you know, the, the uh, as you're fighting, you know, her, her mode goes from, you know, winter, the spring, the summer, the fall, yeah. and as it's changing, then that button changes there, and, you know, so it does something, four different things at cool. the uh, same thing. I think that would be a really cool uh, way for you to kind of mess with timing of the game, you know, mm -hmm. use your, use your, uh, um, use your power as yeah. as you're looking at the, uh, the seasons. It sounds like it'd be a lot of environmental artist work, because then you have to oh, like, yeah. figure out, like, well, um, her, her environment. The stages, yeah. Hey, her environment would be great because then we can make it kind of transitioning between those uh, those those seasons. That would cool. be a lot of fun. Thanks. It's been a lot of fun doing this. So yeah, interesting. So Me too, yeah. man. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you, Ed Boon. Thanks. I am this world's future. Let's hope not.